So now let's go ahead and extend the power of our uh, class structure by beginning to nest classes within each other, right? So um, again, we're talking about an analogy to the real world using our ball and our kind of sports bag. But where do those balls exist when they're in the display window, right? Or when they're in the world, right? If we had in our hand a ball and we dropped it so that it would bounce, right? The ball actually exists within the context of the world, right? So we can nest our classes internal to uh, other classes so that the organization is that much more clear and also allow us to extend the behavior of our objects a little bit further uh, from what we have uh, right now, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute. All right, so again, in this case, we're going to uh, incrementally update our uh, program so that we are uh, making sure that it's doing exactly um, what we expect. So the end result is going to be the same as what we just um, created in our sketch, but it's going to be organized slightly differently. Okay, so we talked about the context of the processing sketch and the individual class and how they're related in terms of how they're set up. Um, where we're, um, as we created our ball or my ball or the sports bag, we're doing that here. We're creating uh, all of the instances in the global setup. And then in the update, we're calling to all of our secondary uh, methods, which is also coming from the global draw. All right, so if we wanted to nest the the classes, right, um, that we currently only have, let's say, my ball is here, we're going to nest my ball into the context of the world, right? So what that means is that we're going to have one more le uh, level to our hierarchy where in the global setup, the variable, first we need to create a variable to store the world. And then inside of the setup, we're going to construct the world. But inside that, that's actually going to instantiate all of the objects that are going to be used within the world. Then within the global draw, we're going to update the world, which is going to call to any secondary methods. And most importantly, call to updating each of the objects individually by calling to its secondary methods. All right, so let's go ahead and implement that. We go back over to processing. This is uh, save and save as. This is class, sorry, uh, example five, ball and world class. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, we are going to uh, write out our pseudocode. So at the beginning of um, the file, instead of working with array lists, we're going to nest classes, right? And here, instead of declaring an array list to store multiple objects, we're at first going to declare a variable for the world object, right? Which, of course, is going to have to be another class that we add as another tab, right? Um, this part's going to go away, so I'll make a little star here so we remember to do that. Um, we're still going to have uh, the same declaration of how many balls we want to create within the world. And here, instead of um, instantiating the ball object, this is going to go away, this is going to go away, we're going to instantiate the world object. Instantiate world object, right? And then here, instead of looping through each one of the um, individual objects within the array list, here we're just going to call to the main call to the main update method within the world class within the world class. Okay, and all this is going to go away as well. So again, we're going to encapsulate one more level all of the actions that we're doing here by instantiating multiple objects 
and calling to each one of them to update their, their properties into the world class. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, open up a new tab here, which is going to be the world with a capital W. I'm going to go over to my ball class, and you know what, let's go ahead and do this from scratch so that we uh, are comfortable with setting this up uh, from the beginning. So again, we have to uh, def declare the, define the name, define the class name. This is going to be define the class properties. Define the class constructor. This is the one that we missed last time, but we'll make sure that we have it uh, here at the beginning. Class constructor. Define the primary method, which is going to be update. And define any secondary uh, methods. All right. So... Um, let's go ahead and um, get the world started, right? All we're going to do is first call it, the, um, define that it's going to be a class called world. Open curly brackets and close curly brackets down at the bottom. Hit control T. Everything looks, um, looks well here. Okay. Now, in the same way that when we were constructing our ball class, we were basically pulling from what we had already done in the main tab. We're going to do the same thing here. All right, so um, let's go back to the main tab. Let's go up to the top. We said that um, this part was going to go away. Well, actually, the sports bag, we're going to take that out of the main, main tab. So Control-X, go back into the World tab, and this is going to be the array list to store multiple objects within the class, uh, within the class of the world. All right, so there's the sports bag. And then we're also going to need to also have here again the number of balls that are going to be inside the sports bag. All right, so that's, um, that's looking good. Inside the class constructor, uh, we're going to go ahead and say that this is type world. Open parentheses, our arguments go in here. Open and close curly brackets. All right. And whenever we construct the world, we're going to say that there has to be uh, the number of balls defined that are going to be in the sports bag in the world. Right. So world constructor, we're going to say int underscore numballs. And then again, just say numballs equals underscore numballs. All right, so whenever we construct the world or instantiate one, we have to just define how many balls are going to be inside the sports bag. All right, in the same way that we did in the setup over here, we have to initialize the array list. So I'm going to cut the array list, go back to the world, and put that here. So we're initializing this array list of sports bag. All right. Now, whenever we construct the world, we also need to um, construct all of the balls that are going to go in the sports bag. So remember that when we were looking at the, um, the PowerPoint here, in terms of the anatomy, whenever we call to the constructor of the world, that also has to call to the constructor of every object that you want to create. So uh, I'll leave this open in the background so you can see it. All right, so instead of just ending here, we need to keep going. And uh, the part of the uh, initial tab where we looped through to create all of our balls, this is going to be cut and put back into the world class constructor. So this is going to instantiate all the ball objects based on num balls, right? And again, nothing really is going to need to change here. All of these things are fine relative to the scope of this part of the, the program. Height can be used anywhere, so we're good to go there. And we're going to end with adding the sports, adding the ball to the sports bag.
All right. Um, so now we've got the constructor set up for the world. And next we need to just go ahead and define the primary method. Well, this is going to be pretty simple again. Um, we're going to update the world. So this is going to be void update. Open and close parentheses. Open curly brackets. Close curly brackets. Control T to get everything to be auto format. All right, and here what we're going to do is update each of the ball objects in the sports bag. Well, we've already done that, so we can go back to the global draw. Take this part, which is the uh, in the draw block, we're going to take the for loop where we update each ball. So instead of updating it manually here, we're going to do that inside the world class. All right, so defining the primary method of update by updating each one of the balls internal to the world class. All right, we don't have any secondary methods for this, uh, for this class right now. All right, so I'm going to save that, and the ball class doesn't need to change. And now we just need to finish off the first tab, right, which is first, let's declare a variable for the world. Well, let's call this world type of object my world, all right, and that's all we need to do. We're going to say, how many ball objects? Well, there's going to be 20, right? Just as before. Setup and size stay the same. We now need to instantiate the world object. So my world equals a new world. And we have to supply, whenever we're constructing this, the number of balls that are going to go into the world, right? So we're going to say, num balls, just as we did before. All right. So there's going to be a new world object called my world with this many balls inside of it. That will uh, instantiate it. And now we just need to update the world. Right. So we go down to the global draw and we say my world dot update. So we've now we're working with multiple objects all but that are being stored and nested within the world class. So our first tab gets even more streamlined, right? There's a world. It has a certain number of objects inside of it. Uh, we instantiate the world and we update the world. Then the world, following the diagram over here of the anatomy, the world gets um, constructed, but we initialize the array list that's going to store all of the elements, uh, the balls, instantiate the ball, and then every frame we're going to update each ball. And again, the ball object doesn't need to change at all. So we hit save and run. And we have the exact same thing that we had before. But now we have a couple of additional opportunities. Right? Once we have all of the um, balls inside the, the sports bag, we can start to, and the sports bag is in the world, we can start to have these balls understand themselves relative to the other balls in a very clear uh, fashion. Right? So right now you can see that sometimes they overlap each other, so they don't actually run into each other and bounce or anything like that or, or collide. So by changing the structure and encapsulating everything inside of the world class, we are able to do that. And we are able to do that very easily. All right, so let's move on to the next exercise. Um, if we go back here.